Understanding Negative Load In the earlier case of our resource leveling with individual resource analysis one by one, we leveled the resources. That is, no resource is over allocated. But while doing so, we introduced some negative float. Negative float is not desirable in a schedule plan or the project plan, which will include the scope, the schedule, the cost, quality, risk, among others. So, what I have done here, I have added some extra fields early start, late start, early finish, late finish. If you remember, in the theoretical part of forward pass and backward pass or the two pass technique, I said total float is equaling late start minus early start. So, late start should be greater than early start, late finish minus early finish. In other words, late finish should be greater than early finish to have a total float of positive value. So, if you can see, I have taken the previous file that is resource leveling by analysis and I have renamed it and we have some negative total float. Here as you can see, the late finish is less than early finish. So, this formula of late finish minus early finish is giving us a negative value. Here too, for PRD approval, again you can see total float is negative, minus 2 days. Here again, late finish is less than early finish. So, late finish should be more because it is finishing later and that is why it should be more, but it is less. The reason total float got introduced because as you do your leveling or scheduling, it will do a calculation and it will populate the values. So, if you have some constraints or dependencies or there are some other areas, then total float might get introduced. And this total float negative value which is getting introduced is coming from the calculation. This calculation as I said late finish minus early finish or late start minus early start, this is coming from schedule. So, I will go to this schedule icon and here I am going to choose options and I am going to compute total float as. It is clearly saying I am going to take a closer look. Compute total float as finish float equals late finish minus early finish or it can be late start minus early start or total float can be smallest of start float and finish float. So, this is the default formula. Total float equals late finish minus early finish and because in our case as you can see we have the late finish is less than the early finish that is why we are getting a negative total float and it is not desirable. So, the reason we miss some time because we do not look at the total float. So, here is a good thing or a good practice that you can follow. You can enable the total float also in the graphical part of the Gantt chart view. So, I will right click here and go to bars or you can go to bars also from here the bar setting here. Now, here I am going to go to the negative float. So, I will choose this negative float bar, I will select this or enable this and I am going to take a bigger size. So, or a smaller size also will do that is the default one, we are going to take a smaller size and I am going to say ok. Now, as I did that and I am going to take this divider and move it to the left, as you can see we have the negative total float coming here. So, this too if you look closely. So, this is 2 days, this is also 2 days because we have holidays. Saturday, Sunday and Monday which is 11th of October, it is the holiday as per our project calendar. So, when you schedule it, you can automatically find out if any negative total float has come. So, this is the way to find the negative float, display the negative float and if you find the negative float, you have to resolve those negative floats. In the next video, we are going to see how to resolve those negative floats.